Welcome. Today on the show, I'm joined by Acting Undersecretary for Personnel and Readiness, Brad Carson, to talk about the future of the force and personnel management. Sir, thank you for joining us. Now, sir, my first question is why? Why all the personnel changes and initiatives? What changes in society and the makeup of our force has the DOD seen that's kind of prompting the big personnel changes that your office talks about? Across the Department of Defense, we have the greatest um, number of people who are working in um, incredible jobs, doing incredible efforts. But the question, I think, for all of us is whether we have the force we need for the future. And that's what Secretary Carter asked me to look at, is thinking about how we're going to redesign the personnel system for the 21st century. We need to rejuvenate some of these processes if we're going to meet the needs of younger people who are coming in and to make sure we keep women in, that we have the adequate diversity across the force, and that we, again, keep the best, um, the best asset our military has, which is the people. That's what we're trying to do. For sailors that have followed some of these initiatives, they might think they're very familiar to some of the stuff SECNAV, CNO, and CMP have also been discussing. So how are those Navy efforts to kind of reform personnel linked with the DOD larger effort? Well, the Navy is a leader in this. What Secretary Mabus, what the CNO, Admiral Greenert have talked about, are exactly the kind of things we're trying to do across the force. But sometimes the Navy is hamstrung by legislative um, proposals that uh, keep the Navy from doing all that it wants to do, and the other services too. So what we're trying to do is restrict, or end some of the restrictions on uh, that law requires to uh, encourage the services to adopt the best practices that the Navy is showing us. Well, sir, when we talk about the future of the force that your office is pushing, a lot of times people will mention the overhaul of personnel policies. Is that accurate? And what are the main things going into this overhaul? It is an overhaul because we have a system, a personnel system, that's really based in the 20th century in an industrial era. Today we're in the 21st century and information age. I think new people coming into the force, the millennial generation, want a more flexible system. They want a more narrowly tailored one for their own talents. They want the chance to raise their families. They want to stay in, in certain stations longer than previous, uh, previously allowed. They want the chance to go to graduate school. We want the chance to have their promotions based on merit, not merely time and grade. And so we're trying to change all of those kind of things. And for the military brings a revolution in human capital that is found elsewhere in the private sector but hasn't yet come to the Department of Defense. We're trying to change that. Well, sir, thank you again for joining us and talking to our audience about the future of the force and what that means for the Navy. Thanks, MC1. I appreciate it. Thank you.